Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General Civil War, and we are fighting the Battle of the Wilderness. What you're seeing in front of you here is the very early phases of the battle, our opening maneuvers as we attempt to flank the Confederate positions by swinging wide left, uh, wide to our right, wide to the Confederate left. Uh, this is part 52 of my uh, Union Let's Play of the game Ultimate General Civil War. We're playing through the Gant Grand Campaign, fighting as the Union Army, and this is part 52. We are deep into this campaign. We are looking at the Overland Campaign, the famed Battle of the Wilderness, which is, interestingly enough, a minor battle in this game. We're attacking across some open fields to some very heavily dug-in Confederate positions, but we're hoping to overwhelm them and crush their flank. In the last video, we built the army up to begin the Overland Campaign and begin our efforts there, and uh, we began feeling the Confederates out. This video, we'll look at a full-fledged effort to crush the rebel forces and win the Battle of the Wilderness, which I'm still amazed is considered a minor battle, although it is a multi-core minor battle, so it's that's interesting in of itself. With that being said, a couple of weeks ago, I live-streamed this battle. The footage in front of you is from a live stream, and I will continue uh, to rely on the live stream audio and commentary. I'm thinking at this point I'm going to do a Confederate campaign as well, or some other kind of series within this game where I focus more on the actual history that I have in this series. With that being said, I am going to go ahead and duck out here and turn it back over to myself uh, multiple weeks in the past and allow you to listen to the live stream audio as I played through this battle. Hope you guys enjoy, and as always, I'll catch you guys at the end. Let me know your thoughts below, and uh, without further ado, it is me in the past. Okay, that's weird. All right. All right, guys. Um, thanks for watching. All right, so we've broken through here on their left. Springfields are probably more hotly engaged than I would like. Alright. Oh god, I didn't want you to charge. Springfield retreat, you're losing more men than I want you to. Alright, so we've kind of broken their flank a little bit. We've got a bunch of troops here that are still set up. So I think what we do is we advance toward this kind of salient here, toward these skirmishers here. Move the Irish Brigade up, move the Black Hats, kind of attacking an echelon toward the enemy. Really would have thought that enemy... Um, All right, so they've refused their lines a little bit. Cavalry has, has been a, a butchered a bit here. Change of plans. Generally, your task to repulse AP Hill's from, Corps from Bla, 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 Brock's Road has become more complicated. The Texas Brigade, the vanguard of Longstreet's Corps, has been spotted, and it's more than certain that Longstreet's advancing to attack us. 
In order to secure Brock Road, we must also fortify these woods and repel the attackers. Oh, great. Moreover, we cannot lose control of our headquarters at Hickman Field. Brigades of your other corps are moving to assist you. Okay. So it looks as if Longstreet's coming up. I'll get some troops into these woods over here. I just as assumed there were Confederates okay, already there. But I guess not, so we're running across the hill. Definitely rebels in these woods. I don't know how many. There's some. Maybe just a brigade? Alright, so I think we've caught them in a bit of a, a salient here on the flank, so that's definitely a positive here. Caldwell's getting hurt badly. Alright, so we've secured this road. Confederate reinforcements are coming up. Move the artillery in here to support... Where are you going? Good lord, dude. Don't expose your flank that way. Trying to drive him back hard. Alright, so Williams has driven him back. Some guys up here. Move our supply wagon in. The second core is arriving on the field. We'll just deploy... We're just going to deploy them straight across. Kind of advance them in. Another rebel division's approaching. We've got about two hours, it looks like. I'm assuming for a victory we have to secure Taps Woods. Yeah. We can't lose too many men doing it. All right. Some artillery forward. What are you flanked by? Oh, they're behind us, I guess. Another rebel division is approaching us? Good god. More and more rebels into the gap. Alright, so we've kind of driven them back, but now our flank is in danger. Alright boys, keep pressing, keep pressing. This ended up being much more of a bloodbath than I had hoped.
Need to bring this core up more quickly. Run them into position. Get the reinforcements on the field here. Before we get overwhelmed. Get General Gamer. Get him up here. Where is he? See, this is the stupid thing with troops retreating behind your lines now, is it's kind of like, alright, now we've got 1,800 men in our rear because they retreated straight through our front line. Because that's just how the game works sometimes. All right. Kind of got some of their troops caught in a funky angle here as they come up toward us. Looks like one of our cavalry brigades routed from the field of battle. Which is great. We've got a hundred skirmishers trying to hold the flank with no ammo. Alright, so we've kind of stabilized the left, I think. I think Perry's at least temporarily being held at bay. So now we just gotta push for this objective here and then hang on to it. I'm not going to try and push through the woods too much and try and be too aggressive with destroying the rebels. I'm trying to not lose too many casualties. Um, Nelson's being charged. Oh god. Our repeater brigade's barely been engaged. I have not used them all that effectively. And Brian's brigade of the enemy is melting away. So is Nelson of ours. Nelson's one of our... Is he one of our elites? He's lost over 300 men, looks like it. I'm going to try and move some of these brigades that are a little bit more in the reserve for to charge onto the objective here. Got a lot of troops over here that are kind of holding our flank, but aren't really heavily engaged. All right, I don't want the Springfields in a melee action, so I'm actually going to pull them back. Yikes! It's a tough volley. Alright, so we're moving on to the objective. We're getting damn close to taking it. Oh god. There's a lot of guys in the open over here. Ugh. Whatever happened to alignment of, of your troops?
I'm not keeping my troops in good alignment here. Man, this has turned into a clusterfuck. Don't get too far forward there, Vaughn. Well, I can see why they give you 15,000 replacements for this battle, if you win. I think Lee would be like, maybe we shouldn't throw away our troops quite so haphazardly, right? Just maybe? Maybe that would be smart? Oh my god. Alright, so we've taken Taps Woods. That's the objective we need to hold. All right, we have to hold it for 20 minutes. Looks like one of our cavalry brigades has recovered a little bit. Let's go move him into the rear of Perry there. Cougar's repeater unit. Let's get you over here. Take on Perry. At least make him think about it. so exhausted no one can charge right now. Rosecrans is wounded. Good god. <sighs> Alright, well. I think we've lost more than 15,000 men. I'm not quite sure. Maybe not. We can hope. Hope and pray. The enemy's lost more than 15,000 men, that's for sure. Go inspire your men, you guys. Don't just sit back there. Are oh, you fucking kidding me? They got behind us? Can we even get back there in time? That's so fucking stupid. What is it? A, a brigade of enemy cavalry just somehow miraculously showed up in our rear? God damn it, I hate that kind of bullshit. Let's see if we can get back there in time. Seriously, a whole enemy division behind me? That's so fucking stupid. I'm sorry, but the fact that they just show up behind you, that's dumb. Dumb. If we lose because of this, I mean, there's no way we're getting back there in four minutes. My issue with this kind of way to lose a battle is there's literally no... It's just really gamey. 
it's like, oh, okay, they're behind you, even though it's not like that particular location is critical to our ability to, to win the battle. It just doesn't, it's one of those magic hill syndromes where it's like, this place is important because we said it is. Alright, so it looks like we at least get the 33 minutes to get back there. I guess my point, you guys, is it's not really our HQ, the way the game works. It's magical hill syndrome. Alright, so it doesn't look like they've got any more troops back here, so we should be okay. We've got two brigades to their one. And there's artillery on your flank, Frank. Watch your flank, Frank. Alright, so we're back to the objective. They're in good cover behind those houses. They're just gonna sit on the objective. And meanwhile... Back to the bloodbath in the center. Goddamn guns, guys. And now charge. Cedric, you guys take a freaking long time to reload your weapons. Enemy artillery. Again, our repeater, our Spencer unit, didn't really do much. Really? Hooker was driven back on that? Hmm. Alright, so we'll finish the battle. It's a victory. Only just. We lost 10,000, just shy of 11,000 men. Uh, and we'll get about 20% of those back. So at the end of the day, we'll gain a net 5,000 recruits. Uh, 20,000 Confederate casualties, so overall, uh, I guess a successful battle, I guess. Uh, in terms of goods, captured some Harper's Ferries, that's good. Um, some m and J's, Menfields, Texas Tylers, which we can always use to sell. We recaptured some of our Spencer Carbines from our own casualties that fell. Um, some sawed-offs, did we get any artillery? Ooh, nice, we captured 16 12-pound uh, Napoleons. Uh, and is that the only artillery we captured? It looks like it. Overall, a victory. Officers, Howard Mahone was wounded. Clifton Nelson was wounded. Oh no, John Gibbon is dead! Uh, it's okay, guys. We had two John Gibbons, so we're, we're okay. 
Um, William Rosecrans wounded. Uh, and Joseph Hooker was promoted to Lieutenant General. So depending on which John Gibbons was killed, it looks like it was the divisional commander, John Gibbons. So now we have three Lieutenant Generals. Uh, good job there, uh, Mr. Hooker. Um, yeah, overall, let's see the most effective unit. The Confederates actually broke the top ten with the unit. Harris's brigade was in the top ten. Not a very efficient battle for us uh, when you consider only about two to one casualties, but it's a rough terrain. Mule shoe will probably be more difficult, which is coming up next. Um, you can see here we also gained uh, 140 recruits through some prisoner exchange. Uh, we got $150,000 uh, and 15,000 more recruits, five reputation. So we need to go ahead and replace some of these casualties that we suffered in terms of our leaders. So Nelson was wounded, and we don't have any reserves for leaders. So maybe do we? We can't even buy any leaders with reputation either. Um, great. All right. Uh, <laughs> Career, let's go down here, and I think we're going to spend on economy or training. I'm not sure which. Uh, let's go with training. Uh, replacing, well, we can do a lot with rookies. Let's go with the economy. So we'll go ahead and save as much money as possible on weapons. Get a better deal when we sell weapons back. We're going to instantly sell back those Texas Tylers. We're not going to use those. That'll give us 21 grand. Uh, is there anything else we're going to sell back? It doesn't look like it. Not initially, anyway. Skirmishers will sell back the uh, 1855s. We're not going to use that. And also the sawed-offs. We'll sell those. Artillery, you can see here we now have quite a few Napoleons. Uh, we got way more artillery here than we need, so if we need money, we can always uh, feel free to uh, to sell back some of that stuff. Some of these guys, like the Springfields, if we take a look at... Uh, whoops. If we take a look at their statistics for this last battle... They killed eleven or a thousand for only four hundred losses. So the Springfields did okay. The Irish Brigade they inflicted two hundred lost or inflicted five hundred lost two hundred. They were really lightly engaged, I suppose. One hundred and eighty losses for the Iron Brigade two, two uh, against two hundred and eighty. That's kind of disappointing for the fact that they had repeaters, but I didn't use them very effectively. Um, similarly, the Black Hats were light, lightly engaged. And uh, Nelson's brigade was uh, relatively evenly engaged. These guys weren't really all that elite, though. Um, so, looks like we lost a couple of brigades destroyed as well. We lost two brigades here in the first core. Um, we lost... Oh, we didn't, we didn't have a whole division deployed. That's why I was going to say that's crazy. Um... So with the victory at Brock or at Brock Road, uh, it actually also falls over to Cold Harbor, so the enemy army will be 5% weaker. They're also 5% weaker because we won at Gettysburg, and I'm guessing if we win at uh, the Mule Shoe, they'll be 5% weaker as well. So that's all, you know, good news. If we go in here, what's the intelligence say initially for Cold Harbor? It says the enemy has... Thir well, that's just the initial deployment of 13,000 troops. I'm not sure what they'll bring to the battle, um, but we'll see. Um, for Mule Shoe, what can we do here? What can we, what do we need to worry about bringing to the fight for Mule Shoe? Um, two cores again, but two full cores this time. So one in the assault and one in reinforcements. So um, it's going to be another big fight. It says the enemy has 51,000 soldiers, which is a lot of fucking soldiers. Um, if we were to deploy those two cores right now, we'd outnumber them, and again, we can bring in another six, well, we can bring in another nine, uh, nine plus three, we can bring in another twelve brigades. So we should heavily outnumber the enemy, but it's going to be a tough fight. Uh, this is going to be a tough enemy position, heavily dug in, no way to flank them. Uh, this will be a bit of a slaughter. Um, I'll tr probably try and keep my best troops out of the fight, uh, if we're being honest, and just kind of use some, some scrubs. Lieutenant General in command of a brigade? I think we'll uh, put a brigadier in charge of that hooker. We'll give you at least a division, right? Yeah, we'll give you... We'll give you the second division of the first... First Corps. All right. Um, it's kind of laughable to see a lieutenant general in command of a division. All right, everybody, and that's going to do it here for this video, the Battle of the Wilderness, or as the game puts it, the Battle of Brock Road. We have won yet again. We are an unstoppable Union juggernaut rolling over Confederate forces at our whim. 
But the next battle will be an interesting one, a challenging one at that. We've got to deal with Confederate forces that are heavily dug in, in great terrain. The Battle of the Mule Shoe, or the Battle of Spotsylvania. Uh, I think we did well, all things considering, coming out of uh, the wilderness with a stronger army than I think we went into it. Uh, but we'll see how we, uh, how we progress moving forward. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video as always. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.